Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Options Mentor. How are you? Well, this is a crazy Friday here. We've had a lot of moving around in the market this week. And then next week, on Wednesday afternoon, we have the Fed announcement, whatever they're going to do with rates. Looks like I believe the market's supposedly pricing in a 25 basis point hike. But I think a lot of it will be about what comments do they make? How are they looking forward? Is this it? That type of thing. So going into that kind of thing can be a little bit tumultuous in the market. And that's why I want to talk about a trade I've talked to you guys about before. But I wanted to bring it up again. It has been working so well for myself and for people. And it is the kind of trade you can be much more comfortable with whenever you're going through a crazy news period. So let's get started here. I'm going to share my screen and you'll be seeing uh, a VIX chart here. Now we can see the VIX is pretty low. In fact, it's about as low as it's been in well over a year. But despite that, I'm going to recommend a short Vega trade because this trade, being a butterfly, many times you'll find that volatility doesn't really hurt you as much uh, when it goes against you, meaning up in a fly, as it does in a calendar. When volatility goes against you in a calendar, it's because of the long you have. And if volatility goes down in that, it just destroys its value. And the whole concept of the calendar where the long is worth more than the short can get greatly damaged. But in a fly, I don't worry so much about volatility coming in and, and messing up my fly if it happens to go up because I've got really a really, really flat daily line. Let me show you here that actually protects me from big price movements. So let's hit the SPX also kind of been chopping around on the chart. And here it is, the all put flat fly. Now this trade, I like to do 35 days or more out from expiration. Today is 35 for this particular expiration. And I usually place it a little bit below where we're trading with the center because that way you have just a little more room on the downside. Now I just set this up a few minutes ago. The market's ticked down a little. So we could just, let's just bring it down to 41.40. We're trading at 41.49 and then 40.70. Now, you'll notice this is 70 points between the short and the long on the, the downside and 60 on the upside. Now, you the 70 is a constant. That's what I do on the downside. But on the upside, sometimes I use 60, sometimes I use 65. But I have noticed well, with the lower volatility, if we look here, this 60 looks better. Let me show you what I mean. If I'm at my upper break even with this 60, I'm down about $60. You see that up here? At my lower break even, I'm actually up about $10 or $15. Now let's make it 65 wide on the top. Now I'm down over $100, but I'm actually up $90 on the downside. So the downside would be better for you, uh, but the upside is getting banged up pretty good. I don't know. I think you could do the 65. I really do. But I'm going to lean towards doing this one. And what I get here is a trade that's really flat. What if the FOMC comes out next Wednesday? And let's just put it on next Wednesday's date here, the third. And what if it causes the market to, say, go up 80 points from here? So that would be 4230. You'd be down very little, maybe 100 bucks a contract, maybe less. Let's say it gapped on you and you couldn't adjust it. And I would adjust it or try to repair it here around these break-evens. But I'm just showing you the damage that you can take in price movement. You wouldn't be down much. And if we went down 80, well, you'd actually could be up a few dollars. And I've actually had these go down about three or four days after I was in them and made, you know, seven, eight, ten percent on big down moves. This is a short Vega trade, of course, but I'm telling you volatility, and I believe it's because all these options expire in the same expiration, it just doesn't affect you near as much as whenever you do a long Vega trade and then volatility goes down against you. So I think this 7060 looks good here. Uh, you know, you if you understand this trade and how to do it, it's something maybe you could look at even next week. And um, also, uh, of course, trade paper. You know, if you've never done these before, trade them on paper. The idea is we want to try to get 10% profit and get out. 10% of what? Well, the 10% of what they cut. What did, what did this trade cost us? 
what did they hold out of our account to put this trade on? Now, if you did a one lot here, you're going to pay, if you got around the mid price, we'll just lock it there, but it's like $510, right? 510. And then we have a margin uh, because of how they uh, margin put unbalanced flies, unlike call unbalanced flies, with a put unbalanced flies, you get a small debit, but you get some margin you have to pay. With a call unbalanced fly, you just get a big debit. So let me show you what I mean. So you can see 980 plus 510, I think that's 1490 this trade would cost. What if I did it with calls? Well, how about that? Right? Like I'm saying, you could do this with calls if you wanted, but you're not um, saving any money by doing it with puts or and calls aren't costing you more. It just looks like it because there's no margin, right? So I, I like to point that out because, boy, that really throws people. Just always remember that a put unbalanced fly or a call unbalanced fly and the SPX are the same price. Or then it could be, you know, some $10 difference or something, but they're the same price. It's just that one has margin and a big deb, a small debit, and one has just a big debit. But I really like this trade here. Uh, I think it's going to make a lot of sense probably on through the summer. Uh, if we get under 15 much on the VIX, I don't do this trade as much. I'll be doing long Vega like counters or diagonals or something. But between 15 and 25 on the VIX, it's full steam ahead on doing this trade if you know how to do it. Just, uh, you know, practice it, practice it on paper. And I think you'll find this trade's very rewarding. And um, before I go, I wanted to ask you guys, make sure you subscribe, tell your friends to subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button. Give me some comments. I got a lot of great comments last weekend. I think the most I'd ever gotten. All very complimentary. I appreciate that. Now, if you guys uh, have ideas you want me to cover in, in future videos, what do you guys think would be important for me to go over as an options mentor? Put it there in the comments. Let me know what it is, and I will be happy to talk about those topics that people have interest in. Uh, so far, I've mainly I stuck with some trading psychology and some basic spreads. I do like to do spreads to give folks something current that they could look at, uh, like this all put fly. But I'm willing to do any other topic you want or dial into something. Just let me know. And I hope you guys all have a great trading week next week. It should be a quite a week with the Fed and that announcement. And uh, I'll talk with you guys all in the future. Thanks for turning tuning in to the Options Mentor. Have a great day. Have a great week. Bye-bye.